Hello everybody, let's try to solve this problem where we have the distributed load as a function of x. So what does that mean? It means that as you go further along the span of the beam, your distributed load value is going to change based on the function and based on the distance you are from a specific point. So you see at the end here, at 4 meters, you have 160 newtons per meter because you plug in 4 meters into the w function. That's the value it's going to give you. The reason these questions are difficult for most people is because people aren't taught what the formulas mean when they're handed to you, and you don't know where they came from in the first place. So I thought it'd be easier to just recall where we came from prior to try and understand what all of it means. So let's take the rect rectangular distribution that we know, and we understand that fr is going to be w times x that means the height of our distribution times the span it covers. There's a squiggle here because we know that if it was a triangular distribution, we would use one half as a coefficient. Now for fr based on the function, we know that if we take the integral of a function, we're gonna have the area underneath the curve. So if we take the integral of the entire span, considering the function of the distributed load plugging the values of x, that means we're going to have the area underneath this distributed load. But where does x come from? What does that mean? We remember that when we're taking the integral of a function, we have these infinitesimal small sections that we're cutting out, where the length of each of these sections is going to be dx, and the height is going to be the function w. Okay, so we're still finding the area here. It's just a different way of notating it and we're using integrals to solve it because we have a complex curvature to deal with. Now, if we're finding the centroid of the resultant force that we have, it's gonna be a similar thing. If we look previously, we know that moment is equal to force times distance. So we consider the moment resultant is equal to the force resultant times the distance from that centroid. And then you can isolate for that X. In this case, our x is going to be using this notation, but it just looks a lot different. And I can explain. We know fr because we already have it up here, right? And we know mr is going to be fr times x bar, right? We don't have x bar yet though, but if we consider that each of these segments that we cut out has fr acting right in the middle of that segment, we can consider the distance x for all of these different segments. And we know that we already are considering the area of it, so it gives us this formula. x for each of the segments times the height of each of the segments times dx, and then it'll give you this formula. It's this notation just considering integrals. Now that we've had a basic review of what is going on in this problem, let's try to put what we learned into use. We have fr, in this case, we have the integral over the span. So we have four to zero. Then we have the function of the distributed load, 2.5 x cubed dx which is the, the length of each of these small segments that we cut out during the integral. All right, so now what do we have? We're gonna have 2.5 over four x to the four from four to zero. Now, if we plug our numbers in, we're gonna solve for 160 newtons. And just in case you guys are forgetting the rule that I'm using. I'm going to write it down. And this is the basic rule for a simple integration, uh, just in case you guys forgot what I'm doing. Um, so now we can find, since we have fr here, we need to know where it's going to end up with respect to a in our case. So we have x is going to be equal to this formula down here, which looks scary, but we don't even really need, we don't really need to worry about it. 
Why? Because the only thing that's different here is this little x at the top of this function. So we pretty much just add that in to what we already had before, which was 2.5 x to the 3, no, x to the 4 times dx. All right, and then on the bottom, it's fr, right, from previous. So we have 160. What do we do now? We pretty much just solve it the way we would have solved it before. Take the integration of this. And this is going to be from the span, 4 to 0. We plug our numbers, and we're going to be left with 3.2 meters. So it seems a lot harder than it is when you first see it. But these problems are solely based on your understanding of calculus from last, uh, last semester. So I wouldn't worry too much about a problem like this, but it's just good to know and refresh your memory uh, just in case something like this comes up on a quiz. I hope this helped.